Hello folks. Yeah, it's been a while since I've put something up. Got kind of busy for a while. Got a little bit of a breather, so I thought I'd show you something neat that I just myself recently learned about GIMP. That's what you see up on the screen. What, you, what I'm going to show you today is color correction, and it's a well-known technique in Photoshop, and I didn't think you could do it in GIMP because I thought it was missing a tool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Come to find out, it has the tool, works a little different, but will still get you the same results as you see on the screen. I googled this image here. As you can see, it has a very strong yellow color cast to it, and using a technique I'm getting ready to demonstrate today, I got it to look like this. Okay, the technique is not a new technique. I cannot claim that it is my technique. The only thing I'm showing you is how to do the same technique that people in Photoshop have been doing for years in GIMP. And the technique is called Color Correction by the Numbers. I first learned about this technique from a book on Photoshop uh, Restoration Retouching by a woman, woman, sorry, I can't talk today, named Katrine Iceman. She shows it in a book, and if you definitely are not sure how something looks because you weren't there when you, the photo is taken, for example, if a relative gives you a photo and says, hey, can you fix this for me, you can do this. Now, there are there are other ways to color correct. In, um, here, I'm going to show you a quick couple that you can do in GIMP. I mean, there's tons more. I'm just going to show you a quick few. But then we're going to get on to the main meat and potatoes of this technique, basically doing it by the numbers. So let's go ahead and go back to ground zero and get started with this. So let's just go ahead and right click and I'm just going to delete this layer. I always duplicate my layers, especially in GIMP because we do not have, uh, pardon me, we do not have correctional layers that sit on top, what they call adjustment layers in a lot of other programs. We don't have that quite yet in GIMP. So always, always, always duplicate that layer. And if you're really paranoid, make a duplicate copy of the photo before you even start and work on that duplicate. That way your original is always safe and you can go back to it. So I'm going to duplicate this layer by right clicking and saying duplicate layer. Or you can click this little button down here in the toolbox. Now, you can do this several different ways. You can use you know I'm sure there's um, I know that GMIC can do it if you have that plug in there's some other ways you can do color correction one of the quick dirty ways you could do and we will be using this dialog the levels dialog is you can say auto and have it best guess which didn't do too bad in this photo still a little dark but didn't do too bad it actually corrected this quite well reset that or you can set, grab these droppers here and what this does is allows you to pick a black point, gray point, and a white point, which sometimes works pretty good. But you got to guess, like, okay, I'm going to say that this should be basically a gray, and it didn't do too bad. It's a little, still a little tinge, but not bad. Now, sometimes these quick techniques will work. Sometimes they won't. Using the levels and this tool that I found out again, GIMP has, you're going to be able to do it by the numbers and be able to do a pretty decent job of color correction. You can always tone it down if you have to or need to. Now, again, like I said, I can't take credit for this technique. I'm just showing you how to do it in GIMP. Okay, the first thing we're going to need to do is we're just going to reset this and cancel out of here, is you need to bring up your point sampler dialog. Okay, I didn't think GIMP had this until, like I said, I went th thumbing through trying to do it uh, technique for you guys and I was like well how the heck do I do it without it then I said well let me see if the GIMP has it sure enough it does here's where the tool lives and I'll show you how to use it go under windows dockable dialogs and if you come down here where it says sample points click on that it should put it over in the palette right here I already got mine open so if I click over here you can see I can sample pixel and everything else and that's what you're going to want you want the pixels because it's going to tell you the RGB values of what we're going to be adjusting now once you pick this palette what you will do to get a point onto your photograph is you're going to come over to your rulers make sure you have your rulers on press and hold the control key click down on the left mouse button 
it's going to, if you notice my toolbox, it's going to pick the color picker. Drag out and you'll see like a crosshair. And what you're going to do is you're going to place some points. I work from what I think is a black point to gray point to white point, but you can do it in any order, just as long as you know which one is which in this palette up here. So I'm going to say inside that eye socket right there should be black. Okay, I'm going to go back over, pull out. Around here, I'm thinking it should be about a medium gray, somewhere around there. And then I'm going to go and pull one more point. And somewhere right up here, I'm thinking should be a white point. Now, I will do something a little different than what she teaches in her book. I know that if I was to adjust each one of these levels to a 255, it's going to be pure white and it's going to blow it out. So I'm going to, before I even really start adjusting, and I'll show you how to work this, I'm going to tone that down so that way I don't lose the detail on the top of the skull. Again, I'm using an image I found off of Google just to show you this. This is not my image, and I'm not going to make any profit out of this image. I'm doing this to show you guys the technique. The technique is, is once you get your sample points on here, okay, you're going to read these, read these three samples that you got. Like I said, my black point, the second one over here is what I think should be the gray point, and this one should be my white point. Again, I'm going to tone that one down. The idea is, is to get these numbers to match the lowest number. Over here, whichever one's the the middle range number in this case mine will be 60 I want to match that number and over here I'm going to bring this down to about 250 to 245 to make sure I don't blow out the detail on the top of the skull cap here and what I'm going to do is match it to that number I set the red to so very you know very quickly and easily we're going to be able to do this now we will warn you as you do adjusting you may have to revisit other parts to get the tone back down and these numbers you want within about five points of each other so say like for example if I can't get you know if I can get this you know within three points you're very good if you can get it dead on awesome but within three to five points is usually acceptable anything more than that you might see a slight shift and and tweak it if you need to <clears throat> so let's go ahead and go over to colors and bring up our levels dialog again and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to here where it says channel and click down and you see you got red green and blue so I want to click on the red channel I don't want to mess with the value I'm going to click on the red channel and again I want to tone that high point down so I'm going to grab the output slider not glad sorry about that and tone this down some okay 245 that tone that down just a little bit see if anything else changed up here and it didn't All right, now we can start correcting this image on my black point okay I see I got red 3 I need to match a 0 okay now how this works this is your dark tones over on the left your mid tones in the middle and your whites or your lights on the right what you're going to do is you're going to move this slider in to darken. If you need to lighten it, you'll use the bottom part, the output. Same thing here. This will darken, this will lighten. It's kind of reversed and it will take just a little bit of time just goofing off with it, but give it you know give it some time and you'll kind of understand the correlation. But this one here, because we're trying to get this to match zero, we're going to do that. But since it's so small, instead of me trying to drag this exactly, I'm just going to click on here and use the up arrow on my keyboard to tap it until that reads zero. See how that now read zero? You remove the three in here, go to zero, and you'll see the difference here once I click off and let it adjust. See, it goes to three. Click here if I tap it. Watch over here as I tap. <clears throat> One, two, three. See now it's zero. All right. Now the next one. Well, my reds are running a little high. I need to go down to 60. So I'm going to take this middle slider and pull it this way. Again, just pull it a little bit each way until you see the numbers going in the direction you want. I need mine to lower, so I'm pulling slowly to the right to drop the numbers. Okay, I'm within three points. 
two points. I got a dead nuts on at 60. And this is going to look, it might look like it's getting worse, but it's not. Just give it some time, guys, because once you get all the channels to correct themselves to the numbers, it will look good. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I think I'm getting a cold. And of course, on my highlights, my red is my my channel of choice. So we're going to drop the green. And again, the green is running a little high on the dark, so we're going to repeat this process again. Stepping it up. Okay, now I'm dead black. Now, in actuality, if you're really going to print this, and I'll say this warning, you probably don't want it to be a true, uh, what they call 100% black or what, you know, it's not really in the print world a true 100% black. That can be argued. But in RGB, this is 100% black. 000 is basically, you know, you know, as black as RGB can get. You probably don't want to print that um, because it can cause some problems. But for the, this demonstration, this will work just fine. We can always lighten it up if we need to. <clears throat> it looks like green moved. And I know I've set it to 60, so I'm going to move it over a little bit. Because when you move these sliders, sometimes these numbers will move. So you just need to kind of keep an eye on them. Whoops. I'm just clicking up because it's such a fine adjustment. I'm, you can either put your cursor in here and hit the up down arrow keys or you can click the little dial on the side. Now I'm back to where I need to be for the middle tones. And for the light tones, see green is lower than that. So I'm going to grab this slider, start moving it over. And once you get close, like when I get to about 240, if you want, you can, on this case, I'm going to hit the down arrow key. See if I can get it exactly to 245. There we go. See how my green kind of moved again? So I gotta move hit the up arrow. Whoops, not I'm sorry, down arrow. And see it's within one point right here, and that's and that's really, really good. If you can wanna fool with it and tap this again to see if we can get it yep one tap got us back to where we need to be okay so we're gonna go to blue okay blue is already set that was our our starting point for the shadows midpoint I need to bring that up so I'm gonna bring this to the left here and the numbers are increasing so I'm gonna keep going Okay, once I get to 57, I'm going to click inside here or click the little numbers beside it. 59, 60. Okay, the other number didn't move. We're good. And we will probably have to come back and adjust this back to the right. But now I'm going to bring blue up on the highlights, which means I'm going to slide this over. See, we got we already went way too far. Two forty-five, but see, look how high our blue went here in the middle. So we got to bring that down. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can tap that up just a little bit. Oops. Hitting the down arrow key. Let's see if we can move this. As you see, I was able to get my numbers with a little bit of fiddling to black being zero. What I picked for my midtone to be all 60s in this case and 245 here. And now if we say OK to this dialog, it does look a little blue, but we can always correct that out. But you can see it is a, a ton better than that <clears throat> if I just click on and off. So as you see, you know, we were able to correct by the numbers and, there, and to get a better result. Now, I will say it depends on what you choose for your highlight, shadows, and midtone will depend on how well this correction works. 
to me the backboard does look like it's a little too blue so I would probably warm that up just a little bit the skull I think looks fine but then you could use a, a selective correction to warm that back up and but you would do just you know select the skull and then reverse your selection or you could just pick the background because it is pretty uniform besides the little slat in the back <clears throat> and just warm that part up and leave the skull alone and then you could do that but there you go guys that uh, that's basically correction by the numbers can you do this with curves yes you can what you will do is you will set the curves up and then try to match them I don't normally recommend beginners to try that at first because of the simple fact you know if you move the curve too much you can cause a little bit of problems and and curves are a little bit harder to understand than a level is so try it with levels first but if you're comfortable with levels pardon me and you want to kick it up then by all means use the sample points and do curves but there you go this is really quick how to do correction by the numbers like uh, people do in Photoshop Hopefully you guys like this one, and hopefully I won't be a stranger anymore, but, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up around the corner, so I'll be celebrating the holiday like everybody else. So until next time, have a good one. Hopefully you guys, you know, like that, and like you, like um, like me, maybe you didn't know this existed, the color sampler palette over here, and I can't talk today, sorry. You know, give it a shot and see if this helps some of your photos. Alright guys, till next time.